good morning everybody uh, today we will discuss about the preliminary idea on static graphing it's our first class so i will just give you a brief introduction about the subject static graphing firstly static graphy as you know it's the study or rather initially started by studying the uh, sedimentary rocks that is only the sedimentary rocks um, are included within the study of under static graphy but later um, actually say as you can understand that as uh, the layerings that is the term strata which comes from the sedimentary origin uh, this layering term actually will fit for the sedimentary rocks so that is why initially this branch of geology grows by studying sedimentary rocks in a systematic way but nowadays uh, along with the sedimentary rocks all other rocks that is igneous metamorphic rocks all these rocks are studied uh, under this branch that is static graphy now the study of static graphy it attempts to understand the common observations such as what are the rock types what are the surrounding rock types of a particular one that is what is the above rock layer below rock layer what is the spatial distribution of rock layers um, how it came to the earth surface where it is formed how it is formed so all these things are to be identified within the term uh, within the subject or within the um, branch of geology that is identification you have to describe those things in a vivid way so that everyone can uh, may read or study your identification next is the composition that is by which material that particular rock is composed of because we know that uh, the minerals which are the constituents for forming a rock uh, their stability condition is different that means they form in different uh, pressure temperature conditions uh, in case of igneous and metamorphic rocks and in sedimentary environment also the stability field of different um, minerals are different some are more physically stable some are more chemically stable so the composition becomes one of the important part to identify and describe the rocks next is the sequence that is the uh, in which order the rock is occurring whether it follows any particular uh, nature or it is occurring abruptly uh, that is uh, mainly the in describing the above and below layers of any particular uh, rock layer and lastly the correlation that is uh, correlating uh, matching with uh, other areas rock types so that is the main approach static graphy in terms of regional and global correlation and thereby for searching any particular type of mineral for searching uh, any particular type of ore deposit and other things becomes much much easier as well as due to correlation now 
the stratigraphy as a branch of geology get more importance and people nowadays cannot walk a single foot without studying stratigraphy whatever else he is he or she is studying so everyone studying any branch of geology must know the stratigraphy of that particular area and not only the stratigraphy of any particular area but it relations with the surroundings and that surroundings is uh, maybe regionally that surrounding may be globally so more scientific approach is nowadays uh, nowadays implemented for stratigraphic study and that is known as the temporal and spatial relationship of rocks is nowadays very much needed for studying stratigraphy now suppose you visited a place uh, looks like that it's a nice place for uh, picnic and for a geologist it's a nice place for geological field work now after reaching this place you be you found many rocks exposed on the surface so they are uh, they can be readily um, studied by you and your co-workers and after studying in the evening you came back home now after returning home someone asked if someone asked you who is not very much familiar with the subject geology that what did you do in today's work you told him that we uh, found some rocks names as sandstone peridotite mica schist etc etc so the person who basically ask you what is your observation in today's work he simply did not get any interest because he does not know geology he or she does not know geology and thereby he or she is not familiar with the terms what sandstone means what peridotite means what mica schist means even including the structure if you call him uh, if you told him the, that you observe some kinds of folds uh, isoclinal folds class 1 folds some falls normal falls river for reverse falls joint planes uh, apart from a geologist the common people even your brother your sister your parents may not be able to understand what you are actually trying to say so you saw them this picture they saw this picture and realized that it's a very good nice place to visit but not for geological study but for picnic a day out now if they are somehow able to understand that these rocks are made up of different kinds they're not uh, a single type of rock but can anyone identify those different kinds of rocks in this picture even you or me we are also not able to identify a sandstone a shale a limestone a peridotite a mica schist or any kinds of rocks within this picture so to better understand the rocks of any area we have to input 
or we have to uh, implement such way so that everyone can understand can visualize the original scenario without going that particular place so thereby we are producing the lithologs that is how the different rock units which you found in this area from bottom to top they are graphically or pictorially arranged in a systematic way so if you put this uh, graphical representation uh, by the side of this picture one can easily understand that these rocks these rocks is found in the bottom part of this hillock and this rock is found in the topmost part of this hillock and they can easily visualize that this hillock is not composed of a single type of rock rather they are composed of different kinds of rocks which are indicated by different symbols and these symbols are indexed at the side of this uh, graph so by which they know the names and they can observe the occurrence of these rocks that is after which which rock in it came so without going or without visiting this place everyone can understand the rock types which are present in this hillocks from bottom to top so that is why it is known as the graphical or pictorial representation of any regions rock layers now apart from using pictorial representation graphical representation is more scientific term because this picture is also pictorial representation that is the original picture of that area but this picture did not illustrate you about these finer rock layers you cannot identify the different rock layers from these pictures so apart from saying pictorial representation graphical representation is more scientific term now your graphical representation of different rock layers is over so people understand what are the rock types present in that area and how they occur that is which after which after which the rocks appear in this mountain now if someone asked you what is the height what is the altitude of that hillock now one incompleteness found in your graphical representation that is whether this hillock is 100 meter or 300 meter or 1 kilometer or what what is the altitude from the surface from the flat land so to make anyone in the world understand what is the altitude what is the height of this hillock with respect to your graphical representation because you can easily see that the height this graphical representation cover and in your picture this hillock covered if you compare these two heights definitely this one is larger so the scale of these two figures is not matching but you also know that this graphical representation 
is basically of this hillock so there is a mismatch between this uh, picture and your graphical representation so to overcome this problem you have to put a scale this scale will easily help you to understand the original height of the uh, original height of the structure original height of the hillock so if that scale is suppose two kilometer so you can measure the height so putting that scale at the side of this uh, graphical representation you can measure the entire height of the hillock so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 another 2 might be here and might be this one is 1 kilometer so 10 11 so almost 11 kilometer is the height of this hillock uh, that's just uh, a rough sayings because uh, no uh, earth surfacial structure is of this much height the highest uh, altitude structure highest height structure found in the earth surface is the mount everest which is uh, 8.48 kilometer sorry 8.8 .8 kilometer uh, for your understanding i just uh, make this as an example so and not only you have to graphically represent the original picture by different symbols um, vertically one after another the rock layers but you also have to put some scale by which uh, you can depict you can illustrate the original scenario in a different scale and people from anywhere in the world they can reproduce they can interpret from this graph what the actual scenario may be so that that in this way the logs or litho columns are done now coming to the principles of stratigraphy the stratigraphic principles based on which we draw those kinds of lithologs or litho columns first is the uh, principles of um, or law of superposition proposed by the famous person nicolas steno uh, according to him uh, if the rock layers are undisturbed then older layers are found at bottom in a sequence of rock layers and successive younger layers occur over it that is in a sequence of rock older layers are found at the bottom and more and more younger layer founds uh, at the top second law is the law of original horizontality and it says that if sediment disposition is not disturbed by any kind of event any kind of phenomena then sediments can spread horizontally in a horizontal fashion and they maintain this orientation after their solidification that is sediments after deposition when they turn into rock if they remain undisturbed they are they remain their horizontality that is they lie as some flat layers and you can see that if in a glass beaker you put some different colors uh, material for the experiment basis um, and these are of indicates different uh, sedimentary uh, particles different types of sedimentary particles if it is undisturbed then at time one what you uh, infield in this beaker if this beaker is not disturbed then it will deposited in a horizontal fashion 
after that in time two you put this red sediments they also follow this horizontal fashion of disposition and lastly in time three you put some gray or pink uh, sediments they also follow this horizontal distribution so in each time the sediments deposited from uh, free settling or the sediments which are freely deposited they follow the horizontal orientation as well as we can also see that the oldest deposition occurred that is found at the bottom and the youngest deposition occurred that is found at the top now as i earlier told that if the sediment layerings which are um, deposited sediment layers which are deposited they are undisturbed so they remain some as some horizontal layers but these horizontal layers can be reoriented by some kind of tectonic events or some kind of diastrophic forces and they change their orientation so from horizontal layers now they become uh, more or less gently inclined layers so this kind of change in inclination from horizontal to any other uh, inclined position that indicates that these layers these sedimentary layers are disturbed after their deposition so that is not showing their initial depositional condition after deposition these layers must be disturbed by any kind of uh, force so here in this picture you can see the different rock layers i just put some white dots so that you can uh, understand the different orientations of the layers in this topmost portion you can see that layers are almost horizontal whereas in the bottom part you can see that layers are somehow inclined now this inclination not always indicate that these rocks are uh, tectonically deformed and turned into some metamorphic rocks no just a simple um, very low energy force can alter the orientation of a sedimentary rock also they remain as a sedimentary rock not only uh, <coughs> it is not obvious that forces always uh, change them into a metamorphic rock but depending on the nature and amount of force uh, a sedimentary rock can go to metamorphism or cannot go to metamorphic terrain but their orientation is changed due to some technique or due to some uh, force implied on it so this bottom uh, layers which does not show the uh, initial horizontal uh, disposition that is according to law of original horizontality so that means after deposition of these bottom layers some kind of force acted on this they change their initial orientation and tilted them in this fashion after tilting this above layers above horizontal layers are deposited so that is the sequence of phenomena how these um, layerings of rocks occurred and found in nature now how a bed is disposed in nature that is depicted or that is illustrated by the third law of static graphy that is known as law of lateral continuity again it is pro proposed by nicolas steno according to him a sedimentary layer will extend indefinite spatial area until or unless 
it is disturbed or it is restricted by some other uh, body or other effect so if a uh, sedimentary distribution is not restricted by some some kinds of uh, resistant body then a sedimentary deposition will extend for indefinite extent and how a sedimentary layering can be disturbed um, how a sedimentary layer its special distribution yes, there are some simple four ways by which the special distribution of any sedimentary layer can be restricted the first one simply is pinches out that is here you can see the first feature the black layer um, this black layer gradually thinning towards the left direction that indicates that gradually the energy condition by energy condition of deposition uh, by which this black layer is deposited that gradually diminishes or that gradually ends so by that way the energy condition for deposition of this layer is gone and thereby the layer gradually pinches out pointing out and ends here secondly if the layer abuts directly against some older rocks here you can see this uh, light brownish portion that is the deposition within a marine sequence and which occurs um, above and basement surface so if some kinds of restriction is occur here suppose a large uh, sea mount is occurring here so these kinds of sediments which are getting deposited by any fluvial activity into the shallow marine part they becomes restricted due to the occurrence of la this large marine uh, mountain sea mountain so this sea mountain directly abuts this marine deposition thoroughly truncated by erosion suppose these rocks are after getting deposited and uh, forming or sol forming or solidification they are exposed at the surface and now they suffered erosion so they uh, eroded differentially at different places depending upon the resistivity of the minerals depending on the resistance of the minerals um, they can be eroded sharply so in this case also their lateral existence indefinite existence is not followed and th lastly they are cutting by faults so after their formation if any kind of diastrophic events happen and a fault occur so you can see that every layer is sharply truncated with respect to some plane that means with respect to this plane the layers are dispersed above or below or in a sideways fashion that means they are not found continuous in this orientation in this sequence so that is cutting by force so in this four way the continuity the lateral existence in nature of rocks can be disturbed the fourth law is law of cross cutting relationships here you can understand that the rocks that are cut by any other geological uh, event <clears throat> or any other geological feature that event or that geological feature must be younger in with respect to uh, timing of formation compared to those rocks in which they uh, occur here you can see that an intrusion a dike intruded within the country rock so definitely this dike formation of this dike is younger with respect to these uh, layerings horizontal flat layers because until or unless 
there these fat layers are not there this dye does not have any place in which it will be intruded so firstly there must be some country rocks there must be some host rocks on which during some later stage any kind of intrusion can happen or any kinds of events that cross cut those earlier formed rocks can happen so first the formation of these rocks have to happen then they can be cut by some other activity so that is the law of cross cutting relationship so definitely that material which cuts the pre existence previously existent rock it is younger compared to the host material compared to the host rock the host rocks are always older next is the rule of inclusions according to these rules the fragments of any rock body which are found in some other rock body that indicates that the fragments are coming from older rocks here you can see that in the layer b it hosts the fragments of layer a so definitely first layer a have to be deposited it had have to be solidified after that during erosion they are fragmented and these fragmented parts are now included in a new sedimentary rock that is known as b so fragments came from older rocks that is the law of inclusion so included fragments occur in younger sediments in younger sedimentary rocks and those uh, included fragments come from some older rocks lastly the law of faunal succession and you all know from your paleontology classes that faunal succession means the organic world and you all know that the organic scenario of art changes with time the organisms which found in the ancient art is not same right it is today and those organisms which are gone from the art history that is those which are extinct from the art history they never came back which we in our paleontology terminology called evolution is unidirectional so by this concept it is very much uh, easy to say for a static affair to identify different kinds of animals in different successive rock layers and they as the animals as the organisms are never repeated with time so with going to younger age every time you will get from more simpler simpler to more complex type of organism through time from older time to younger time so with younger age rock strata rock layers you will get different kinds of animals as well as more advanced more complex type of organisms so two different times rock layers can never show same organic occurrence same type of organisms can never found in the rock layers of two different types now the contacts of these Uh, rock units the contact may be intrusive when one intrusive body that is mostly from the uh, magmatic elements magma coming below the earth they move towards the low pressure zone that is move towards the surface and intruded within the country rocks by cutting the uh, country rocks 
and after solidification after <coughs> after chilling of the country rocks uh, this intrusive material make some contact with the country rocks that type of contacts is very sharp and we found some baking effect around the margin of the country rocks and this type of contact is known as intrusive contact intrusive contacts second is the fault contact which is a indication of some kinds of diastropic force acting over that and due to the diastropic force the rock body displaced with respect to one another and they show different altitude of occurrence of the same rock layer due to this tectonic displacement which is known then known as faulted contact lastly the sedimentary environment the contacts found in sedimentary environment uh, that is known as the depositional contact now this type depositional contact can be of two types first is the conformable contact and second is the unconformities unconformable contacts or unconformities firstly the conformable contacts so the difference between the conformable contacts and unconformable contacts are the time in unconformable contacts the contacts between two successive layers there is some kind of uh, age difference but in conformable contacts the distribution or the deposition of sedimentary layers is almost instantaneous that means there is no some no major age difference or no significant age difference is there in the successive rock layers now this conformable contacts that is the continuous contacts in sedimentary rock layers they can be identified in a lateral spatial way that is within the time and they can be identified vertically that is across time so laterally these contacts can be pinch out that is a layer the energy condition deposition energy condition of this layer gradually diminishes so the layer gradually pinches out such that the sandstone bed the deposition condition gradually ends and it pinches out to deposition for other kinds of uh, sedimentary rocks second type is intertangling where you can identify repeated uh, forward and backward movements of rock layers this kind of um, repeated uh, projected forward and backward intertangling nature of rock layers is mostly observed due to due to very um, sharp or very frequent changing in water level conditions so maybe during the deposition of limestone the water level condition may rise suddenly then again the water level condition drops suddenly again water level rise again water level drops so in this way repeatedly and the water level of this basinal condition uh, alternatively rise and fall and due to this this sharp intertangling nature of sedimentary layers are found lastly the gradational nature here you can see that gradually this sandstone unit or sand unit this sedimentary unit is gradually mixed with this other kind of uh, sedimentary unit that is shell and you can in this type you can find a in between portion where both these sedimentary um, units both these sedimentary materials are found almost in equal proportion so gradually from one kinds of sedimentary unit is converted to other kind there is no sharp uh, change over of depositional condition so these are the lateral contacts pinch out intertangling and gradual contact now there are vertically they can be also observed 
uh, here you can see the abrupt contacts or sharp contacts vertically that is vertically the sandstone uh, change to limestone then change to again sandstone so these are known as abrupt contact second is the gradual contact or these are also known as the gradational contact here you can also see vertically that the sandstone unit gradually changes to uh, a mixed portion where sand and shale both occurs and then again they gradually change to uh, shale so from sand to shale this changeover is occur gradually that is not very sharp and you cannot clearly uh, demarcate any boundary below which you clearly uh, say that it is made up of sand and below above uh, and above that line you can clearly say that it is made up of this shell because it this changeover occurs gradually so there is no sharp boundary between this lower sandy unit and the upper shell unit and firstly the intercalated units that is vertically occurring vertically sharp or frequent change in uh, water level due to this uh, frequent change very thin layers of different sedimentary units are found so what you see basically laterally that is pinch out or sharp contact intertangling gradation this type of contacts are almost um, vertically are also observed and but their names and they are um, Characteristics are slightly changed in vertically, they are known as abrupt, where the uh, contacts between two litho units, between two sediment units, are very sharp. Um, the gradual, where changeover of sediment units vertically is uh, very uh, not very distinct, they change gradually from one type of sediment to other types, and lastly, the intercalated. Where the changeover from one sediment unit to uh, other sediment unit is very frequent. Now, where the, the contacts between different sediment units is uncon unconfirmable, that means there is a um, gap in timing of sedimentation. And that, in our uh, geology term, that surface which demarcates the uh, gap in sedimentation between two successive uh, rock units is known as unconformity surface the, that surface is known as unconformity surface now there are four types of unconformities firstly a sedimentary rock above which another kinds of sedimentary rocks showing same orientation but this older sedimentary rock shows some kinds of erosion so basically unconformity indicates either there will be non-deposition that is no deposition occur during certain period of time or there will be erosion for certain period of time. So for both phenomena either erosion or non-deposition there is a certain period of time in which there is no sedimentary record. Sedimentary deposition can not occur during that time. So when a sedimentary rock over which another sedimentary rock occurs but the bottom sedimentary rock shows erosion at this top surface that means during the erosional process there is no sedimentation occurs so no sedimentary deposition so that erosion event indicates that there is a time period where no sedimentary deposition is there that means a gap in the rock record so this kind of unconformity surfaces are known as disconformity. Secondly, again, the two successive layers shows same orientation and they are made up of both sedimentary rocks, but here no erosional surface is there. Instead, this surface is a period of non-deposition. That means no deposition is occurring there and also no erosion is there so these kinds of unconformity surfaces are very hard to identify in rock uh, layers the only thing by which you can identify this kind of surface is by with the help of uh, fossils so 
if there is a sharp change in fossil suppose uh, this layer is deposited in cambrian so uh, you can uh, find some trilobite fossils and this layer is deposited in uh, recent times just a few thousand years back so you can uh, find some homo sapiens uh, homo species human ancestors so by this you can uh, say that there is a huge time gap between these uh, two depositional units because there are lots of periods between cambrian and recent times uh, for this picture here you can see that this layer is deposited in 100 million years before and this layer is deposited in 50 million years before <laughs> <coughs> so between this time interval from 100 to 50 there is a almost uh, 50 million years time during which there was no deposition as well as no no erosion is there so instead of some uneven surface you cannot see the uneven surfaces which you are able to see in the previous for this conformity so in parent conformity they show the same uh, bedding plane nature above and below but there is only time gap due to non-deposition lastly the um, uh, thirdly sorry thirdly the angular unconformity where the uh, unconformity surface or the surface which defines a gap in sedimentation they depicts a angular relationship between the above and below layers now here the below layers are uh, sedimentary rocks they only change their orientation after the deposition that is no major diastrophic events are included here but here you can see the the bottom layers are folded the bottom layers are folded that means a major diastrophic events occur after deposition of this rock they goes to some major diastrophic uh, force and during that time they are folded then they are exposed to the surface then they eroded erosion occurs and after that the uh, sedimentary deposition uh, occurs but here in the left figure after deposition of the bottom sedimentary layers due to some kind of uh, forces these layers only changes their uh, tilting they become inclined and after that they expose to the surface erosion occurs and again sedimentation resumes so this surface is depicting some angular relationship and the bottom layers are uh, inclined whereas the top layers is horizontal this surface is known as angular unconformity and the last one is non-conformity where sediments are found on some crystalline igneous or metamorphic rocks so here the rock types is distinctly separate the younger layer the sedimentary rocks are found in contact with igneous or metamorphic rocks here you can see a sedimentary rock into which an igneous intrusion occur may be a batholithic body this batholytic body after intrusion they are getting exposed to the surface so erosion occurs and after the erosion again sedimentation resumes now the contact this uh, yellowish layer with this batholytic body this portion that is known as the non-conformity because here is a time gap between the uh, phenomena of this batholytic uh, intrusion and the sedimentation of this unit but this part the left part or the right part here the contact is within the sedimentary rocks so this is the disconformity surface but this portion the contact between the igneous rock and the sedimentary rock so it is known as non-conformity now how did you identify an unconformity surface in field so in rock record if you are identifying some 
ancient channels ancient river sections river uh, channels or glacial channels definitely um, these channels occur within a rocky terrain that means there is a stabilization occurs before forming these channels so these kinds of channels indicate that they are eroded on a pre-existing material after erosion on a pre-existing surface pre-existing rock body these kinds of channel erosion occur and these kinds of channels are formed so that indicates an unconformity if you found some conglomerate layer in the basal part of any sedimentary layer that definitely indicates that these fragments are coming from the older body that is the law of inclusions these fragments coming from the older body by fragmentation of the older body by erosion so definitely erosion occurs <clears throat> in the older rock layer before this sedimentation before the deposition of this sedimentary unit that is why you get some these clusters thirdly if there is distinct age difference can be identified with the help of fossils here you can see the cambrian trilobites and the jurassic and dinosaur bones so we all know that we, between cambrian and jurassic there are lots of other geological periods so, so de definitely between these two sedimentary units lies a gap where no sedimentation or where erosion occurs and lastly if you found some paleosols that means paleosols means ancient soil layers within your um, sequence a soil generates or plantation founds plants rootlets founds that indicate stabilization of the surface until or unless your surface is stabilized that means no kinds of major tectonic disturbances are there uh, plant generation or soil cannot formed in proper way so firstly the surfacial condition have to be stabilized then soil can formed and within this soil plantation or vegetation can grow so any kinds of paleosols or the plant fragments root fragments in its in situ position found in the interior within your rock sequence they definitely indicate that there is a time where this kind of stabilization is occur occurred and during that time no sedimentation or no may or may not be any kind of erosion occurs during that time <coughs> so recognition of uh, ancient soil horizon also indicates presence of unconformity surface <coughs> that means gap in sedimentation now you all know that preservation of the sedimentary rock is very rare rather being not preserved is the rule is the thumb rule and there is a um, uh, mathematical assumption that all the sedimentary rock which you found in our earth that represents only 10 percent of the total sedimentary scenario happened during the entire 4.6 billion years years so the rest of the 90 percent time during this entire 4.6 billion year billion years time there is no sedimentary record so only 10 percent uh, time within that time we were found the sedimentary rocks so instead of their rock records there are mostly gaps so that is more important so as there are mostly gaps so whatever minimum evidence we found in terms of rock record that has to be very critically studied and very critically analyzed and that is the purpose of stratigraphy so that's all for today's class Hope you will understand. Thank you.